everybody, it's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. And uh, this video is going to be focused on some uh, paint scrubbing techniques. I had a question uh, from a viewer about he wasn't getting the same results that I was getting on scrubbing, specifically uh, some primaries that he was working on. And it got me thinking that what's intuitive to me because of I've been doing it so long is probably not as easy to recreate. So I want to focus some time and attention and close-ups on some uh, ways that you can successfully scrub and blend in a scrubbing fashion. And maybe some things that uh, will lead to a bad result as well. Sometimes that's helpful. Uh, maybe we'll load up a paint too much paint in the brush, too dry. Uh, those things are intuitive and I again I kind of take them for granted. So we'll spend a little bit of focus time today in this video um, on those aspects of scrubbing. So it's not just blowing by quickly and let's talk about it a little bit more in detail. So I've got a, an old shoveler decoy that is kind of my paint sample decoy and we'll work on the primaries of this decoy and maybe the tertials as well or the tail feathers and just focus on scrubbing blending of acrylic paint. If you're enjoying the channel and getting value out of it, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything and it does help me out, help me uh, continue to build this channel. So let's take a closer look at scrubbing and some, uh, some good practices and some practices that might lead to a, a bad result. All right, I'm gonna start out um, creating a base coat material. And this is kind of a, a dark gray or light gray, depending on the mix, but I use Liquitex Gesso maybe 10% uh, gesso and about 90% Liquitex, heavy body acrylic, burnt umber, and then tint that a little bit with carbon black and come up with this gray mixture that I paint on the decoy with a wide brush and then use a sponge. This is just a packing sponge that uh, I got for free if you can find it, you can also buy this material on Amazon and other places. It's kind of egg shell shaped. And uh, just, just use that to put a little bit of texture on the decoy. You don't have to do that, but it uh, does help in these dry brush techniques to have a little bit of texture on there so that uh, it helps pull paint off the brush and helps generate the blends that uh, I'm gonna be talking about. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on that, but I did want you to know that's the base coat that's on here. And then I'm going to use just two colors in this demonstration, Burnt Umber, these are Josonia colors, and Nimbus Gray, and use those just to keep this simple. Uh, you know, I might use a variety of other colors if I was doing this uh, decoy for competition, but for demo purposes, I think it's better just to keep it simple. So I'm going to start by painting over this textured surface now that it's dry with the burnt umber right out of the tube. And then that'll give us a base uh, to begin working on these blends that we want to talk about. Again, just going in with the burnt umber and slapping that on with a one inch wide flat brush and uh, i'll probably give this two coats so that we have a nice consistent dark base to start with just another reminder we're not painting a shoveler today we're just using this blank all right i've got my burnt umber here my nimbus gray and that is right out of the tube um, Josanya. I've also got water close by and uh, I want to talk about maybe three different things. L number one, brush selection and uh, the stiffness. I've already got paint on myself so get that taken care of. All right, back to brush selection. 
to scrub the way that I scrub, I need a nice stiff and yet flexible bristle. And the golden taclon bristle uh, that you can get in these craft brushes, this is a royal crafter's choice, quarter inch chisel shaped or angular shaped brush. Seems to work really well for the way I paint. Uh, because the bristle needs to be short enough to remain stiff, but flexible enough to scrub. I just pulled out this. This is an inexpensive brush. I don't even know the brand name, but um, I want to use it as an example because it's very uh, flexible. The bristle's long, and it's going to be a little more difficult uh, to control the scrubbing on the decoy. So I thought we'd use that as an example. So we'll talk about brush. Number two is paint. Um, how thick, how thin. And that's a combination of uh, how, how dry is it on the brush, how much water is in the brush. Too much water is gonna be a disaster and we'll show some examples of that. Not enough water can be a disaster. Uh, so I always dampen the brush and uh, towel it off a little bit to dry it off, but not go bone dry to begin with. And that will help contribute to the blending as you're scrubbing if there's a little bit of dampness in the brush. So we'll talk about that. So brush selection, the level of water in the brush, and then the level of water in the paint itself as you load up the brush. And then the loading of the brush is critical. Too much paint, even if you have the right consistency, too much paint uh, is going to be a problem. Too little paint is less of a problem because you can always add more, uh, but uh, it's going to appear too dry if we don't have enough paint loaded in the brush, or it may take forever to get the results you're looking for. So I'm going to start out... Um, I use these Royal Crafters Choice. This is, a, like I said, a quarter inch. One of my go-to uh, brushes is a 1 8 inch uh, chisel-shaped scrubber. This originally was chisel-shaped, but it's been worn down. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The bristle gets shorter. It gives you a little bit more control in tight spots. So I keep these old brushes. I actually need to reinvest in some 1 8 inch chisel uh, scrubbers. So I'm using what I've got right now and most of them are worn down pretty pretty much to a nub. So let's start out um, just taking a look at some things that might not be successful and I want to I'm going to use a combination of the burned umber and nimbus gray to give me a lighter value that I want to use to scrub on uh, and lighten. I'm going to start on these tertials because they're a little bigger and maybe easier to see. And on this example, I'm going to go with a lot of water in the brush and you're really not scrubbing. You're just pooling paint on um, and you're not getting a good blend. So if the brush is too wet, that's the first problem. So I'm going to take my paper towel and dab that on there, dry this brush out significantly. Maybe go ahead and with the paint that's on here. And you can see, I hope you can see, I've got a lot more control now with less water on the brush. I just put some Nimbus Gray on this brush and I'm adding it to that because I had so much paint on there. And I'm going kind of in a back and forth motion I actually want the paint to be a little more damp where I want the color intensity. And then as I fade out to the edge of the tertial here, 
I want to fade out to the darker color. Now, there's an example where I pressed too hard. I got too much paint in the wrong area. That's not a huge problem. I'm going to flip that around and go back with the burnt umber. I should probably clean this brush out, but before doing that, but you can see by going back with the burnt umber while this paint is still wet, taking care of that area that was uh, too light to begin with. And a lot of this is feel, and that's tough to convey in a video, like how much, how wet does the paint need to be to successfully scrub and blend? And right now this feels about right. So I'm just going back and forth and creating a nice blend. And you can go back with the Nimbus Gray and lighten things up. And I just put that in the Nimbus Gray and it is mixing right on my brush. Since the burnt umber is still wet here and creating a nice blend flip that around so hopefully you can see that now let's start out with uh, I thought we'd start with too uh, flexible a brush like this one and uh, I'm I did not dampen the brush but I'm going in The, the thing I'm seeing is I'm hitting the tops of the um, texture, but since I don't have the stiffness in the bristles, I'm, I'm leaving gaps. I'm not driving the paint down into the texture the way I want it. It's not bad, not super bad, but it gives me a little more of a grainy look than the blend that I'm really looking for. And it just feels way too floppy to me to, to be able to control it. Not terrible. Let's go back with the burnt umber on the edge here, go back in the opposite direction. I'm able to make this brush work. It's just not the feel that I'm uh, prefer. So again, it's it's kind of too flexible. So I want something a little stiffer like this to give me that better control. And I can press on this and drive paint down in that texture the way I want to. Let's start with uh, a dry brush with uh, no water. And I'm going in and getting a mix of the Nimbus Gray and Burnt Umber again. And I'm going to dab paint off the brush to unload it so I don't start with too much paint. And I'm just hitting the center of this tertial. This is a uh, 3 8 inch scrubber. So good bristle on it, good length of bristle. I'm going to add a little more Nimbus Gray and hit the center of this. 
And in this case, the Josanya right out of this tube is performing fairly well without dampening the brush. And it's very hard to see in the video, but again, it looks a little grainy and sandpapery, and there's not quite as nice a blend. So I'm gonna go back and dampen the brush, then remove most of the water with a piece of paper towel, and go back over this. I'm gonna get, I took too much water. Go back over this with primarily water, but I'm not flooding it. If I got, if I have too much water, I flood it. And all I'm doing then is removing the paint and smearing everything the way um, I don't want. And we've just messed up a lot of good work with too much water. So now we've, we've lost the blended look there and everything is kind of mixed together. Too much water is a killer in scrubbing. So I back in the water, I've kind of taken the water off and I'm going back down. I do this quite often. Go back over the scrubbed area with just clear water on a brush not too much water or you get that result, but just the right amount of water tends to blend things together and soften the look even more than it was before. I hope you can see that in the, in the video. It tends, the water tends to take the darker color since these are freshly painted and the lighter color and just pull the values closer together and makes everything look softer. All right, let's try some primaries and we've got to use smaller brushes because they're tighter geometry there than on the tertials, but a very similar approach. All right, I'm going to start again with kind of a long bristle brush, not my ideal choice and a little too much water. And too much water, again, is killing the approach here because it's just flooding the entire area. And what I want is a nice light blend from the edge going out to dark here. The size of the brush is okay. But it's just painting everything one color because I've loaded it up too much with water. So I probably emphasize that enough. I'm gonna to switch to one of these 1 8 inch scrubbers that have uh, lost a lot of bristle. And I'm going back and blending the Nimbus Gray to give me a lighter value. Now I'm gonna start in this area and you can see with with this worn down bristle it's almost like painting with a a pencil keep this in the camera i'm going back to this side doing the same thing And I've got the brush properly dampened and loaded with paint so it's not flooding everything. And I'm just going back and forth and building up the intensity of this lighter value along the edge of the primary on top of this one so that we create this layered look. So. 
I haven't gone back to the paint yet. So even though this is worn significantly, it can still retain enough paint in a scrubbing scenario to go quite a ways. So I'm going to do all of these quickly. Again, I'm using this smaller brush because it gives me good control in these tight spots. I'm almost out of screen there. And then I lighten the pressure as I go out towards the darker value so that you deposit less paint and I'm, notice I'm going back and forth, scrubbing both directions. And again, I, I want to demonstrate if I make a mistake and get too much out here. You know, I don't want that much lightness out at the tip. I can just remove paint from the brush, dry the brush out, go back to the burnt umber value come in at the tip and scrub back in the opposite direction. Darken that tip again and get a nice blend going back in the opposite direction. I normally do that on all of these blends is go light out and then come back with the darker value and blend back in the opposite direction because it softens things and it blends the colors together. And this takes some work and going back and forth to get a good result. If I go too dark, just go back with the, the lighter value and go back and hit it again. And go back and forth until you get a nice soft blend. And then like I did before, I'm just going to use a little chisel scrubber, make sure there's no color in it, but just dampen and go over the area and just use that water to blend things together as well and soften those values a little bit more. I hope you can see that in the camera. Go back. Too much water, we know, is a killer. Too much paint is a killer. Because now I've got, I've got way too much wet paint on here. It's going to take over everything. And I'm repeating that uh, just because, like I said, it may not be intuitive if, if you haven't painted a lot. You think, I, I need water to spread my paint on there, but in this dry brush technique, it's going to hurt you. So too much paint, and it's all one value. Too much water. I'm going to hit the center of this again. I'm just adding Nimbus Gray to get a lighter value. And I've got too much paint on this brush, so it just keeps laying paint on there and I'm not getting a nice blend.
that I'm looking for. And wash the brush out, go back with the burnt umber. You can get there in a number of ways. I'm just trying to convey what, what I do normally and what has been successful. I'm going to do the same thing on tail feathers. Let's just do that real quickly and then we can finish up the video. I'm back to my little control scrubber, 1 8 inch worn down version. I'm loading it up with a combination of the burnt umber and nimbus gray. And for this first pass, I do want it a little wet so I can get some good color value next to the feather on top of it. And I may do a series of feathers like this until the brush unloads. There's less paint in there now and I can go back and scrub back and forth. So again, I would work that back and forth until you get a nice blend. Let's just try one more. You know, here's a, a bigger brush. I'm just going to go with a bigger brush, dry, totally dry, not even dampen the brush. Go right to the paint. Go back into these tertials on this side. This is uh, a half inch chisel shape. But since I've gone in with just absolutely dry brush, I'm getting that peppery look again and I'm not getting a, a nice blend between the dark and the light value. And I can keep working that out to the edge, but it's not gonna work. I'm just, there's not enough dampness in the brush to promote a blend while I'm scrubbing. So either I've gotta just hit the highlights and call that good, but it's not, not a good blend and I'm picking up a lot of that texture maybe you like that look I don't want that look I want it to be softer so I'm going to go back dampen the brush go back to the paper towel dab it until it's damp but not wet go back in with the burnt umber go back in the opposite direction. Now that I have a little dampness in the brush, I'm gonna have more success with a blend. Even this, though this is called dry brushing and scrubbing, an absolutely dry brush won't give you the blend that you're looking for, in my opinion, anyway. I'm just taking the paint out of the brush again, unloading the water so it's damp, and just use that to go over this and promote some blend, wet on wet blending between the color. And I would work on that a lot longer, obviously, uh, if this weren't a demo, just to give Get a better result, but you can keep going back and forth on that. 
So I hope that uh, is helpful and that I've covered a few things that uh, I've kind of blown by in previous videos, a little more detail and focus on this dry brush, damp brush <laughs> blending. All right, just a quick video on some dry brush, damp brush techniques. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. It's so hard to convey uh, intuition and experience and just knowing how the brush is loaded, how wet it needs to be to perform the way you want it. And I would just encourage you to do this type of thing. Uh, if you've got an old decoy sitting around, give this a try. And it takes some iteration, some practice, uh, getting to the point where you're confident in loading the brush and getting the results you're looking for. So until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving, good painting to all of you.